This is an introduction to the Theo Delft undergraduate lab on quantum entanglement. We present and explain the experimental setup you will use to test Bell's inequality and observe polarization entanglement with pairs of photons. In 1935, Einstein, Podolsky and Rosen suggested a Gedanken experiment, where two particles are entangled in momentum to test quantum mechanics. John Bell formulated a test for the locality of quantum mechanics in 1965. The experiment was realized for the first time in 1982, and now, in 2010, it can be performed by undergraduate students in the quantum optics lab at TU Delft. The entanglement measurements demonstrate the non-locality of quantum mechanics. The setup is built on a small optical table. Pairs of photons entangled in polarization are generated using a nonlinear crystal. The polarization of each photon can then be measured and correlated. We will explain in details the function of all the crucial elements in the experiment. The blue laser, a crystal for parametric down conversion, polarization dispersion compensation, optical fibers, polarization analysis, correlation counting, and the computer program. The first element in the setup is a blue laser diode. It emits at a wavelength of 405 nanometers with a power of 50 milliwatts. A lens in front of the laser diode focuses the laser beam on the nonlinear crystal. Blue laser diodes are based on gallium nitrate, a large band gap semiconductor. Electrons and holes recombine in the active region to generate photons. The nonlinear crystal is a beta barium borate crystal, two millimeters thick, cut at an angle for optimum down conversion of blue light. A few of the incident blue photons are down converted into pairs of red photons with identical energies. This is a very inefficient process and most blue photons are not down converted. The two red photons have opposite polarization and are emitted in two different cones. One cone is vertically polarized and the other is horizontally polarized. By selecting only the two cones overlaps, we get photons that are in a superposition of vertical and horizontal polarization, which means that we do not know which photon is horizontally polarized or vertically polarized, but we do know that they have opposite polarization. This is our source of polarization and tangled photon pairs. The BBO crystal is birefringent. Different polarizations travel at different velocities. The exit time of the photons is therefore a function of their polarization. To erase this time information, we rotate the polarization by 90 degrees and propagate the photons through a BBO crystal again. The photons that were fastest in the first crystal are now the slowest and vice versa. All the photons now emerge simultaneously. The time information has been erased. The entangled photons are coupled into a single mode fiber. The small optical fiber is only 8 microns in diameter and only photons from the overlapping cones are coupled into the fibers. The fibers act as pinholes, but also enable the propagation of light over long distances, in principle over several kilometers. Because the core of the fiber is only 8 microns in diameter, the position of the lens and the fiber must be controlled very precisely. We use a high quality positioning stage for this purpose. We now have pairs of entangled photons, with each photon traveling in an optical fiber. We can use two identical setups, called Alice and Bob, to measure independently the photon polarization. The light emerging from the optical fibers is sent through a half and a quarter wave plate to measure any polarization. A fixed polarizing beam splitter transmits horizontal polarization and reflects vertical polarization with an angle of 90 degrees. 
Both outputs are sent to single photon detectors, which we call avalanche photodiodes. The detectors produce an electric signal for each detected single photon. Alice and Bob detection setups are identical. Electrical pulses from the four APDs are sent to a correlator placed under the table. The correlator measures the number of counts for each APD and the result is displayed by the computer. Correlations can also be measured between any of the four inputs. If two input signals are received within 4 nanoseconds, we have a correlation. The computer program can display the count rates of the four detectors as well as the correlations among the four detectors. You can choose to display a given detector count rate by clicking on the corresponding button. You can expect about 10,000 detection events per second per detector and about 500 correlations per second. To measure Bell's inequality, you will need to measure correlations in different bases. You can simply rotate the measurement polarization basis by rotating the wave plates.